Hello, I am Vess the Fallen. Welcome to part one of our walkthrough for Partum Artifacts. I really enjoyed playing this game all the way through. I'm going to be walking you through some puzzles just in case you get stuck because I know I did a couple times. But before we get into all that, I, I just want to talk about what I love about this game. The sound engineering in this game is absolutely phenomenal. The storyline is top tier. Everything is so much more than what it appears. And the jump scares don't really feel like jump scares. They don't feel like those cheap, quick screams at you. They're really atmospheric and eerie, and they definitely get you. And I will try to warn you guys as we go through the walkthrough when those are coming up, just in case somebody's wanting to watch, but not necessarily have their heart pounding. Um, before we get into this, I do want to also give you a few trigger warnings. This game covers topics like abusive parenting, murder, torture, and some other surrounding topics that could be too much for some. Also, if you have an issue with like dolls or possibly mannequins, this game might be a little much for you. However, I found it thoroughly enjoyable and quite eerie. Now let's go ahead and get into it. So in the game store, they have a letter and I think it really helps set up the story for you. So I'm going to go ahead and read it for you. Dear Art Aficionado, this is an invitation to one of the most exclusive and imaginative art displays. Not only is it an invitation, but also an opportunity to show off your own credentials as an artist. Come join us and be a part of the creation of something astonishing. Help us redefine and explore the concept of art. While this might understandably turn you a bit skeptical, just know that we've done a great amount of research and handpicked only a few individuals that fit our distinct criteria, and you are one of those lucky few. Think about it for a moment. What do you actually have to lose? This is an opportunity for you to immortalize yourself among others in the world of art. The last chance to get out of your dreadful life and be a part of something bigger. So we've arrived at this place. Um, there is only really one thing you can do, and let's go through this gate. So definitely, uh, just go ahead and start walking forward. And you can already tell that the the audio of this game is going to immerse you. Um, I really enjoy that. Make sure that you take some time to look around. There's lots to explore here. And here we can start seeing the house that we're arriving to. Um, there's just a lot around us, and this house seems to be pretty huge. As you walk up to the front door, you can see this little welcome sign and this just bright red door. Unfortunately, the door is locked, so we're just going to head around on this wraparound porch can't see anything in the windows. There seems to be a shed or some other additional house in this back corner over here. Um, the back door seems to be locked as well. Feel free to explore towards um, the other buildings that you see. Like I said, there was a shed back there. There seems to be a gazebo. And then another building right over to the side. Um, but we're going to keep walking around the house for now because I, of course, know that there's not really anything you can do in the back currently. You need to get inside uh, the main house and solve some puzzles. There also seems to be another little gate right up here that will be important later. But definitely feel free to explore now or explore later. Um, I'm just kind of showing you the quickest way through some things. See this little ramp? We gotta crotch ourselves up and go on and get through into our first room. Welcome. I apologize so much for this inconvenient way of entering the house, but don't worry. It's all part of the evening's plans. It is basically to set the scene for what is to come. The display of the main art attraction is located in the sun room, just to the left as you leave this room. 
We'll get started as you get there. A again, welcome. It is an honor to have you here. Please, enjoy your stay. So, this door just unlocked. We can head out into what seems to be the main part of the house. There's a some doors. There's the sunroom that he was just talking about. Um, an upstairs area. This playroom. Um, I believe that's the back door over there. And then we come over to this rule wall. Rule number one, don't go in the basement. Two, have fun and draw. Three, don't talk about your parents. No food in bed. No knocking. Mom and dad are bad people. They hated you. I don't. Uh, be quiet. No screaming. Don't use the phone. Don't touch your clock. The world is sick and so are you. Uh, this really helps start to paint the picture of what kind of murderer we're dealing with. Um, what kind of torture he might be inflicting upon the people here. Um, particularly probably a child considering and saying mom and dad are bad people and they hate you. I don't. Some very clear forms of manipulation going on here. Um, I find it very interesting that he just put it in the middle of the living room. Um, and then here is the sunroom uh, for our art display. This, this is it. Well, it's not complete. And that is the main reason why I invited you here. I want you to complete it, finish it, together with me. I've waited so long for this to happen, and it's so close now. Oh, so very close. It's simple. Five empty easels waiting to be used. I simply want you to find the right, astonishing, beautiful art pieces and put them back in the right order. The sad part is that you can't leave the property. I've got eyes and ears in the woods, so don't try anything cowardly such as running away from this creation, for it will be the end of you. I promise you this will be fun, so please, be part of the creation. Be part of the creation. I need the paintings to be put back in order. This is a big art piece, a collection, the centerpiece of my creations and the reason why people should care. Monsters are among us, and no imaginary ones either, no. People like me. My father, my mother, are all around the world, spreading like pests and caring nothing but filling a void inside themselves. We are real and no creature of fantasy or imagination can tout the nightmares that we leave behind. This is my way of making sure people will open their eyes. People like me should not be able to roam free. If the safety nets actually work, none of this would have been a thing. People would have not gone missing. People would have not suffered. People would not have perished for no other reason than being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So now I ask you to put together this collection in order and be aware of the red herring. Be part of the creation. As you pick up each poem, um, they're full of clues as to what you are looking for for that specific painting. Um, and... Not to where you will find them or anything, but just to where they belong after you find them. Um, definitely feel free to read through each of these. I will read them with you as we place things in their order. Uh, keep in mind, uh, he did say there is a red herring, so that could be a very important uh, thing that you could misstep on. Um, if you come back here. Outside. Listen, you're allowed to leave the house. In fact, you're encouraged to. Be a good artist. Explore this wonderful property. However, leaving the property will turn into your execution. And we don't want that.
While photography isn't really an art form that I enjoy, the fascinating area of photography history that I do give them credit for, post-mortem photography. The idea that you want to keep a memory of a loved one after its passing and make sure that the empty corpse looks as close to alive as possible is quite frankly compelling, to say the least. Be part of the vision. Because the Victorian era cameras took so long to develop each photo, the actors in frame would have to stay still for a long duration of time. Because of this, it was usually very easy to spot the deceased person in a family photo. It would have perfect sharpness while the rest would be slightly blurry. Stand still in the right spot and your focus will become clear. You might want to come back here a little bit later and see the right angle through another lens. Shine some light on the problem at hand. Be part of the vision. So it seems like this is going to be a code. A lot of these photos do seem to have numbers on them. So I imagine that will give us what we need when the time comes. Um, oh. Piano plays a little song for us, but it did say that come back later. Um, I don't think this is an area we can solve right now. We have picked up the key to go to the back door, but I don't really think we can go anywhere else quite yet, so let's go ahead and head upstairs. There is this puzzle here. The Carter Family Story, Dolls of Art. The Carter family was just like any other family. A loving mother, a supporting father, a cheerful child. However, these are only observations from those on the outside looking at the facade of the crumbling house of a family. Redacted, it looks like blood. After the deed was done, the knife was dropped in front of the father's favorite reading spot. It rested on the floor, pointing towards the murderer as the child bled out on the floor. This little dollhouse is movable. You can look at it from all angles. Also, um, the mannequins are movable, and so is this knife. Um, the Carter family thing gave us some clues, but not everything seems to be there. So I feel like this is something we have to come back to. I do know that this is what opens Calvin's room. Sweet Calvin. Calvin was a good kid. Great even. The first time I saw those eyes, I noticed that he was meant to be something more. More than just a vessel for my message, but a prophet, a sapling ready to grow a new family tree, to spread its roots in this godforsaken world and rid it of all the unfairness the system has caused us. When I noticed my vision was but a mirage, all I could see was red. Feel red, smell red, create red. I made sure it was quick. It was awfully sticky afterwards. The more of these notes we see, the more disturbing this, this person seems. Um, okay, so it won't let us go without some kind of light source over there. Then over here we have um, the office, which seems to have another code lock on it. And then this poem. Poem of Two Armies. Two armies lined up, ready to fire their arrows. One side painted their feathers in azurite, the others in blood. In honor, they took turns to fire at each other to show who had the best archers. As the fight went back and forwards, the sons fell first, the fathers thereafter, and the last one standing was the old king. A final goodbye, he mumbled as his legs gave away, a chest filled with blood-covered arrows. So if you walk down to the end of this hallway, there is a dartboard that has both red and blue darts in it. And the end of the poem says blood-covered arrows, so if we focus on that, the darts are in two 
7 and 18. The poem does say the sun fell first, the fathers are after, therefore we'll want to keep that number order of 2, 7, 1, 8, and that will let us right on in to the office. It took me, I want to say, like 30 minutes to figure out this puzzle live because I wasn't looking around for clues. I was trying to find clues in the poem itself and that just wasn't doing it. It was just a bunch of ones and twos, and that was not the answer for me. Um, the office doesn't really have a lot in it, um, but there's some stuff on this desk over here. Some wonderful ambient noises. Um, we get a key to the... Oh, hey, there's TARDIS. Hello, TARDIS. The doctor is here. Uh, we get a key to the front door now. And then we get this note that says, The previous residence. Evicting the previous residence of this house was a tricky nut to crack. I had to make sure that they all passed in a beautiful way. After days of planning, I only had a vague plan on what to do. It was important to me that they would never leave the property. After all, it is theirs, and they should be a part of it. The question is not about when, or by what means. It's about where. So I don't really feel like that gives us much of a clue. If we continue to look around the room, um, this clock is interactive, but it seems to only have a minute hand. Um, and no real clue on what to do with that. But if we go back to this, this says it's not about when, so I don't think this is really a clue, but more of a story piece for us, but this does allow us to go ahead and take that key we just got and go through the front door. I, I do like that it's not just clues that this place gives us, it gives us story as we go. You're picking up little bits of everything everywhere. You know, once again, we're hit with that wonderful audio engineering. You walk outside, you immediately hear the wind rustling the leaves. And it, it just continues to create an eerie feeling as you go through different parts of the game. I love that. So uh, let's go through this front door now. What we got? We got creepy mannequin child and, oh, okay, creepy mannequin family. Well, let's get. The father of the house was undoubtedly the hardest and easiest target for me. Hardest because I didn't know how I would react, and easiest because <laughs> of how I reacted. Seeing him sleeping on the bed took me back to my childhood, and one simple blow to his head was all I needed to leave him unconscious. He woke up, still in his bedroom, to the gracious touch of flames that burned beneath him. His beautiful screams were something I wish my own dad would have left me. But, alas. So, we've got these creepy mannequins doing different things. We've got these um, squares on their backs. And if you go into your journal, there's a thing about them. And about how something might need placed into them. So that's important to keep a hold of. And then there's also these little plaques you can pick up. Um, go ahead and grab those. They do seem to be the right shape for that, but um, we don't know at this point. And then over here next to her, there is this note. Um, and it reads, Mother Charlotte. Calvin's mother, Charlotte, fought more than any of my victims ever did. She got some really good hits on me while I regretted a while I didn't render her unconscious prior, I got the sweet screams I crave so badly at times. 
This time, however, they were muffled. As I forced her head down the bathtub, I promised her that I would take care of Calvin. And I kept that promise as long as I could. Okay, so we drowned her. Sorry, there seems to be like a, a shader thing going on in that corner. Um, yeah, I think it's just a shader. I don't think it's actually anything. Around. There's another, oh, another interactive clock. However, this one only has an hour hand and no minute hand. Hmm. I wonder if we need to set the hour here and the minutes elsewhere. Um, oh, and then there's a key here to the basement. I guess that's where we're headed. Rule number one was don't go into the basement, but, um, you know, we get to make our own rules, I guess. Let's go ahead and head back inside. Um, and let's uh, break rule number one. Head on in. Oh, let's start. Let's turn on the light. All right. Well, <laughs> the light actually worked that time. That's a lot of cement. What are you doing here, bud? Let's see anything over there? Oh. Well, that light went out. Let's see. What do we have here? This is an astonishing piece of invention. Using this light, you'll be able to see what our weak human eyes cannot otherwise see. You just need this in order to follow my trail. Just don't forget about it. We'll absolutely need it later on. Also, because of how old it is, it overheats very quickly. So just give it a quick break every now and again, and it will be fine. I had to collect so much more blood than I originally planned in order to get this to work. I also think I got carried away. I... Okay. How carried away? Oh, well... Just blowing the candles out on me, I see. The eyes will help you see things more clearly. Okay. So, I remember seeing those eyes, like, all over, um, in various places, including the original room we came in on. Oh, it does burn out very quickly. Um, we've got some Roman numerals, it appears. Looks like it was a nine. And then what else do we have over here? Four. Keep following around. Two. Oh, there's more arrows. Okay. Nine, four, two. Oh. Seven. That's easy. Hope you guys know your Roman numerals, otherwise that one might have been a bit of a struggle bus. Oh, and we got lots of little footprints. Let's go ahead and follow those on over. Terrifying. Wee bit creepy. Mannequins are trying to tell me something. Some things are better off being hidden away. Alright, so it looks like we need to crouch down underneath this table. Crawl on through. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff hidden, written on the walls. And um, it looks like a lot of just blood everywhere. Their noises keep me up at night. What do they want from me? Stop following me. Oh, there's a key right there. kitchen key. Okay. Oh. So, um, in case you are creeped out by mannequins, creepy number one is our friend right here. She just came up on me. That's, that's great. I love it. Oh. Okay. There's a little door over here. Let's see what's behind it. 
They are right. Who are they? And why are they right? Um, okay. That's it. This is just a tiny little uh, room. Um, Alright, that door's locked. This one's not. Okay, so let's go ahead down here. You were just unlucky. I do feel unlucky to be the person invited to this creepy house, yes. They were just unlucky. I, I assure you that yes, they were also unlucky. You can either fail hard or succeed completely. Well, that is that is true. Oh, there's something else in this wall. After my treatments, I make sure they all have a sweet tooth for cyanide. What what treatments are you giving them? Oh, there's another one of these little flicky plaques. Let's go ahead and grab that. And then a blue plant blueprint of the house that has some of the clocks on it. It looks like the clocks might be interconnected. There's also a clock in Calvin's room, though, so maybe that's all of them. Ah, and we have found our first painting. Like we'll need to match that to one of the upstairs poems. I go ahead and follow our way back out. Uh, fair warning, there will be a smile jump scare coming up in three, two. There it is. Um, it scared the shit out of me when I was playing the game because I was not expecting that mannequin to just fall out, but it absolutely uh, did. And it scared me multiple times since then. Oh, so nice of them to let us out of the basement. Go on in here. And we're able to place the first poem, which is going to be... He was the one. Deep breaths. Slow breaths. Painful breaths. The shakes are violent like tremors in an earthquake. As they cease, our eyes meet. For the first time, I question my action. He was the only one who understood me, the one person of this world who I could talk to without feeling like a monster. His body goes limp. My hands hurt from the firm grasp on his throat. The eyes, those once beautiful eyes, are suddenly turned something grotesque. I saw my reflection in them and an ugly grin stared back. So you can really tell how that painting correlates with that poem. Some of them are that easy, some of them are not. Um, but while we were in the basement, we did pick up the key to the kitchen. So it'll be the door in between uh, the main hall and the kitchen. Uh, since we've got our black light now though, we can also take a look around and see if there's anything else. I just want people to understand um, this little path line, which if you follow it, it tells you you'd better hurry. hurry. Um, and it lets you click on this light. Um, the path does go all the way around the kitchen and back through the main part of the house. And then upstairs. And as you head upstairs, you notice it kind of wrapped back. So make sure you go around the railing. Um, and the timer just stopped, so you really want to make sure that you are getting through here quickly because it wants you to run. We've got some more of his rants on here. Let's go ahead and follow the line and see where it was. I just need an audience. It looks like there's another light, um, so it'll, we'll have to click those. But there's some rooms up here that we haven't had access to before, so let's go ahead and hop in. I dumped her filthy corpse in the tunnels. Bloated corpses are disgusting. She was disgusting. And then there's this uh, an additional tile up here. Um, and once again, the audio engineer. And you can hear there's like an argument going on in a, a nearby room or something. Um, and then there's another room right over here. 
mom and dad's room. And that one is completely unlocked. I don't know why mother was crying. I took care of our problems. Mother did not understand. So I took care of her as well. Um, and then if you look over here, there's some more uh, lines on the floor. And there is a painting right there. Um, make sure you grab that. Okay, jump scare warning. When you grab this thing that down here below, it is a clock hand. Once you click take, there will it will trigger something. Um, I just want to give you a kind of a heads up because it is kind of jarring. So if you read through the poems in the room, there was one called Dance of Agony and it talks about lighting um, somebody uh, on fire and letting them wake up to the feel of flames. Uh, so, but once you walk out of this room, it does disappear and that will not trigger again. So you, if that's something that might have been a little upsetting for you, don't worry, you just quickly exit the room and it will end. Uh, let's see if there's anything that we can see down here with the black light near Calvin's room. Nothing really different. And then we can head back on downstairs. Uh, the rule wall does seem to have some additional things. It says this is Calvin's rule wall. So that's nice. And then 10 and 15 are covered and then it says it's blocked out don't touch your clock and it says touch Calvin's clock so um, we don't have access to Calvin's room yet but we did see a blueprint that in the basement that said that there were three clocks so I'm assuming there's a third clock there were eyes all over this room and there's a glowy line look at that um, we get down right down here behind this desk there's a little button and it opens up that other room right here in this main first room that we uh, crawled through the window in. Warning, there are bodies in here. They are covered, though. Now, when you head in, there's all these little pieces of paper. Make sure you collect all of them. There should be five. And they all have different uh, symbols on them. Some of them you may recognize, but these are definitely... Um, important to those uh, blocks that we've been picking up. Um, and then this room just really creeps me out and it's got some eerie sound production. So I just, <laughs> I don't want to hang out in there. Go ahead and close the door behind me. Uh, there is no real reason that I keep closing all the doors behind me. That's just kind of how I like to play. Um, and the playroom did have part of its, pu uh, its puzzle say that you needed a light to look through here. So let's make sure that we get back in here. Um, and if you look around, there's these footprints everywhere. One that's got four foot, four feet, one that's got two, one that's got one. So we'll go ahead and just take a look at that and look around. So if we find each space. We'll need to find space one, two, three, and four. One's over here in this corner. And the first number, if you hold still, the picture holds still, it says four. We need to find the two footsteps, which is on the far end of the pool table. We focus on that photo. It's five. The other end of the pool table, you'll find the three footsteps. The number there is also five. If you go to the last set of footprints, you'll see that the number is seven. So the code to our box is four, five, five, seven. And voila, we're in. We pick up a shed key. Before we worry about the shed key, let's go ahead and head back to the kitchen and um, our mannequin friends. There was the note about how the uh, plaques in their back, uh, how something goes in their back and the plaques are a perfect fit for that. Um, if we check out the alchemy notes, um, we see that there are symbols that we have are fire, blood, and water. 
are the three plaques that we have. Um, and we know how Caroline, Calvin, and their father died. So um, we are never given a name for the father, to my knowledge, at least not this far. Uh, so that's interesting to uh, realize. Um, so dad was burned, mom was drowned, uh, and then Calvin, uh, was, I'm assuming, killed in some way that was very bloody based off the note outside of his room that says sweet Calvin and how it was sticky. So water is going to be our, um, just upside down triangle. So pull that out of your inventory and just click that onto mom's back. With Calvin dying in a way that was very sticky, we assume bloody, therefore we want to use the alchemy symbol for blood that they give us, which is a triangle that's upside down with a line and a dash in it. secure that in and we only have one plaque left but it does uh, read fire as the last triangle so the right side up triangle is fire and then this opens uh, warning once you grab this all those mannequins are gonna move in on you don't worry they're not gonna harm you they're just gonna scare you As you turn around, they are um, much closer to you than they were before, and uh, the father looks very disappointed. Um, now's a really good time for us to just go ahead and get this line business sorted. So go ahead and click that, and then you need to run upstairs and click the other light at the end of the hall by the bathroom. Make sure you do it quickly. And we come into seeing that this bookcase has fallen over and there's this little tiny uh, hole that you need to crouch down and walk through to get into your next set of puzzles. I remember being a child and having my own little hideaway in our crawl space. Anything to get away from him. His fat, disgusting body was too much for him to bother chasing me in there. It didn't matter that I went without food for a few days. Anything was better than the constant beating and forced work on various art projects. Nothing could ever be good enough. So after he speaks to us, we can look at these and it says, he, he with body waged a fight, but body won, it walks upright. Um, it looks like we've got the Roman numeral one and the letter K on this one when we shine the black light on it. Um, if you look around, there is this curtain, and it highlights like you can move it. So if you click on it, it moves out the way. And we have another poem that says, Then he struggled with the heart, innocence, and peace to part. Uh, Roman numeral two, two, I-T-C. If you look over here, there is the this chess piece clue. Um, and we will get to that. Make sure you look around in every corner around here because there are clues and things everywhere. There's more eyes down here, so let's crawl underneath this desk. And we find room numeral three. And then he struggled with the mind, his proud heart he left behind that has the letters H and E on it. Um, and all that's left in this area is to open this door. When you open this door, there is yet another painting here. Grab it. Now his war on God begins at the stroke of midnight, God shall win. And 
um, the letter N is highlighted, Roman numeral four, and then the word midnight is circled and it says tick tock, tick tock, all in the, the black light reflective stuff. So we know that we just spelt out the word kitchen and then that says midnight. So it just told us the time to set the clock. Looks like there was a bunch of blood down there, but that was a shadow, I guess. Um, we do not have the clock hand for the basement yet, though. But we do have the other clock hand for in here. So, worst case scenario, we can just put this on here for the time being. And then head towards the next set of clues. Uh, there's nothing that we can do in the Calvin area currently still with what we have. But we did just pick up another painting, um, and this one has a, a good clue of to where it goes. Finally free. Born in desperation to escape the torture this man held me under for so many years, there was but one chance to break out of the circle of pain. At night, my careful steps made me feel like I was flying, flying towards the bedroom where the beast slept. Not a single sound could be heard as I plunged the knife into his throat. Messy, unprofessional, and chaotic. But a first step nonetheless. I was finally free from the agony. So instead of being choppy with the recording, I'm going to admit that I forgot that it does not autosave when I set the painting, paintings down. And I do have to leave you guys to the next area. But while we wait for me to do that, and I kind of just look around, let me give you guys a little bit of our goodbye before we head out to use the shed key. Um, you'll find a lot of stuff throughout uh, the maps to just really look at. I really encourage you to explore around for all the little details in this game. It is so incredibly well done, and I absolutely adore it. Um, part two will be coming out as soon as possible. I'm still getting really used to editing this. If you get stuck on a puzzle and need help, please feel free to reach out to me on either Instagram or Twitter. Um, it's all at Best the Fallen. But real quick, let's go ahead and get us out to the shed. So to get to the shed, you want to head out the back door and go away from the gazebo. The gazebo's to your right, and there's a, the other building that's back there. Well, once again, feel free to go ahead and explore, check things out. Um, when I initially did this, I didn't do it in the order that I have done it this time. This time I think is the, I'm doing it in the order that I think the game intends for you to do it. Um, whereas I kind of just went and did my own little thing. Um, over here to the left though is the shed. That key will let you right on in. Many hours were spent making new friends. My biggest pain is that I also chose them. Too bad they can't speak. Bet they give great advice. So you're just kind of in this room and you come over here. There's another blueprint to pick up. And there is also a um, crowbar to pick up. And the game will save there for you. So I will see you guys. Um, soon. I will get the second part uploaded. I hope you all have a wonderful day and see ya.